as I'm sure a lot of you are already aware, Berhanga Savannah was among the four maps that got a population reset and population redistribution, and ever since that happened, a lot of you guys have been asking for a Berhanga video, and we actually did stream it on the first day that we got access to the new ARs. It was over on Twitch, and we were able to get a Diamond Jackal, but there's a lot I don't know about zone locations, zone times, and all that stuff. So I wanted to get back out here again, and we'll kind of see what we can discover, and hopefully get a better idea of how to hunt this map now. And of course, starting with a level 3 Wildebeest, and they are one species that we do know a decent amount about. Got a gold there at 32.4, even though he looks rather small, but we have discovered the Wildebeest drink time, and it's actually during the day now, which is a huge change from what it was in the past. I think it was this lake up here. 6 to 9 a.m. will be drinking. Of course, they were feeding out there at, what, almost noon. And the reason that I decided to start this hunt around like 11.30 or, or noon, whatever we got started at, was when we ended the stream last time, it was sometime after 10. I just wanted to continue hunting on times that we haven't actually spent time on the map uh, at at this point. Well, that's good to see. A lion drinking basically in that same time frame. In fact, a lion drink time is the same as all has been 12 to 1500. Now, they're going to be a little tougher to hunt now because animals don't lift their head while drinking. They kind of stay in that drinking animation. This is going to be pushing it. I think keeping that shot low, well, would have maybe had a chance at getting a lung, but unfortunately, we hit the ground. But lions, one thing they do still do is flee and then apparently stand still. So I was actually worried about that one. I thought maybe lions were going to drink at night like a lot of predators do. And if that was going to be the case, they'd be a lot more difficult to grind for. And there's still a rare female lion that I'd like to eventually get and add to the trophy lodge. So nice to know we can continue grinding to get that. And kind of in the way that we just recently got started with our second red deer grind, this is sort of the first of our lion grind. We've got a number of rare male lions on this grind because really I would shoot male or female, whatever was there. And of course, female lions are the ones we're after for the multi-mount, so that hopefully is a start to eventually getting that. Well, I don't know that that counts as a uh, new multi-mount addition, but perhaps a Hall of Shame lion? I don't know if they can get to level two. A lot of predators can. I can't say I've ever seen a level 2 lion. I've seen the threes in the past, but I don't know that I've ever actually taxed one, so we may go ahead and do that just for the heck of it. It's not extremely often that they end up showing up, but I wanted to check out this lake, and it, at least right now, is looking to be maybe one of the better lion lakes on Branca. There's a couple more smaller males up on the other end. Now the thing is, if it's anything like Quadro Kalinas and the Red Deer, it seems like the spawns were all kind of clustered in a couple of areas, and then the respawns start to spread out and populate more of the map, so I don't want to just declare that this is going to be the best uh, lion lake on the map, but we'll kind of have to pay attention to that as things go along. Now, we've seen this already. It is just a harvest screen issue, but the manes on the lions, the hair on wildebeest, all that kind of stuff just does not look good. It kind of, you know, helps to make it look like a more pathetic male lion as level 3, but... Hopefully that'll be fixed sometime in the near future, because if that was a 9, let's say, it just really would kill some of the kind of majesty of them. I think maybe one of the most significant changes we've seen thus far to Verhunga is just how spread across the map the K Buffalo are. I mean, it was pretty well noted that really only in the far north and far south were the areas where you'd find them in the past. And now, to be fair, we are in the far south, but we've seen them all over the map as we've hunted in these different spots. And once again, we're kind of dealing with the animations where it's tough to get a shot, but if we can get them broadside, I think the 338 can do the job here. That was our chance. I almost have to hope the bullet got into a lung, and it looks like it did. So currently, some of you guys may recognize this as my little uh, scrub hair spot. Basically when I was doing, I think it was the Cape Buffalo grind and the lion grind, I would spawn down here, go up to this tripod on the hill, and I could normally get in the area of 15 to 20 scrub hair, basically clear the hunting pressure in the north, and get back to the grind. Now, it's possible this is still a good scrub hair area, but I see no tracks. 
And of course, the Cape Buffalo down here is something entirely new. Really, over in here, a little further west they would have been, and then some further east, but never in the south center of the map would we have seen them in the past. And nice little goal for that guy as well. 338 did fine to get into the lung, and that's kind of why I wanted to get out of here today. Just find some of these areas that have animals in them they never did before. I would say it's likely that eventually when all these zone times are figured out, this might not be the case. But one thing that, at least at the moment, I'm kind of noticing with Verhunga is that it's rewarding to not hunt by the lakes. And as I was saying, once we know when all the zone times are, I'm sure we can figure out drink times and hunt by the lakes effectively, but most of the animals with their feed zones aren't necessarily right in close to water like they often are for other species. And again, things are likely to move around with respawns. I don't want to get too specific into locations and get myself kind of used to checking one spot over and over when in fact it might not be the best area to go to. But as of now, it's seeming to be a pretty good idea to kind of move through some of these open areas and look for feed zones. That is a little unfortunate that we didn't get that long shot. He kind of started to turn up towards us. And basically he's going to run around and try to get caught back up. So in the meantime, we'll start moving down towards where the warthog was. And yeah, he'll eventually should make his way down here. Strangely enough, he's kind of starting to go down from those two shots. I wonder if one was like too far back and, and got intestines or what the deal is. He's finally getting down here and at this point, we already hit him a third time. It's not going to matter how many shots we end up hitting him with. Still think he's going to drop, but man, a fourth not good hit. He's bound to just go down any second. I'd like to get a flesh hit to, or a uh, vital hit to feel like we did better, but looks like we're not going to get that opportunity. Four flesh hits and ending up with a silver. I'm surprised he was going down at the rate that he was. Apparently we're going to get attacked here. Nice little 53 scoring Warthog, and now we get to have this whole dance again. Hopefully we can shoot a little better. That I thought would have been a good hit, but it is showing like a flesh hit. I have noticed the Cape Buffalo seem to be a little tougher, kind of like how they were when Verhunga came out, but we've been fairly successful in attempting long shots when we needed to. The new 454, for instance, did pretty well. I mean, we are not getting through their side at all. Whether that is the 338, that time it did. So what... That might actually be really relevant to any potential big Cape Buffalo that come along. That shot may be a bit far back. Next one also far back. Right in the crease of the shoulder. Got a lung. So if we find a rare or a 9... Either we should switch to something like the 454 with that high penetration stat, or we need to make sure that we are very precise with our shot placement. I think our first realistic chance at maybe having a potential trophy today is finally in front of us in the form of a level 4 Wildebeest, and I've been talking a good bit in the last, I don't know, maybe 6 months, anytime we hunt for Hunka, about the fact that we don't see as many potential diamonds as we used to, I mean, you look back at some of the Verhunga videos we were doing when the map first came out. We shot Diamond Wildebeest so often, but part of the reason surely is, if we go around and spot a herd of Wildebeest and there's 40 there, and there is no level 4 with a chance for level 5, often I'll just end up not shooting them because maybe the one big one is in the middle of the herd and there's no decent shot opportunity or whatever the reason may be, and then naturally with no respawns, no big ones show up, so I... I'm hoping at least, with this pop reset and forcing a bunch of new wildebeest to be on the map, that we can maybe take it a little more seriously. There we go. Nice little 30 scoring time with wildebeest. But yeah, like when there's a herd of wildebeest in front of us, I enjoy hunting this species so much, but oftentimes I don't end up shooting them. So just when there's some there, if we can get a shot, especially with the 308 AR, maybe get two shots and just get a couple of respawns here and there to hopefully make hunting them a little more interesting and you know they're one of those species whitetail are another one where level twos make diamond fairly often level four wildebeest make diamond fairly often it can just make it a bit more interesting to go after them and that's a good example right there 
And in the spirit of continuing to do that with a level four order beast out here in front of us, this time not with a chance to make a diamond, we'll go ahead and take that longer shot with the 308 AR and I think we're actually going to be about done. We gotta go back to the second lodge for our diamond wildebeest and that will pretty well do it. And there's no doubt there is a lot yet to learn for Verhunga Savannah, but I think we discovered a good bit and what I've noticed, as I mentioned, you know, hunting around the open areas in the field seems to be a lot better than it used to be. It's got a little bit of a Silver Ridge Peaks feel to it. The Cape Buffalo and the wildebeest, they seem to feed throughout the day and they make traveling from lake to lake a lot more viable. But all in all, not too bad. Two hunts on Branga thus far, two diamonds, none were exactly huge. Our diamond jackal was right on the number, and our little beast, of course, was a level four. But I'm looking forward to getting out here more and just learning more about the zones, zone times, locations, and all that stuff. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.